Good morning, Tahmina Khan is here in TK Maths is fun. In today's video, I will explain to you the question which will help you to understand hypothesis test and unbiased estimate of population mean and variance. The question I have picked up is from June 19, 7 to variant, question 3. It is a syllabus of A-level mathematics, paper 7, S2. So you can see on the top my website address. You will find it very useful. Do visit it. And if you like it, press like button. And tkmathsisfun.blogspot is my blog address. I have posted all my free videos over here. So let's begin with this question. Uh, it is claimed that on average, a particular train journey takes less than 1.9 hour. So it is said that it is less than 1.9 hour train journey, right? The time T hours taken for a journey of 90, 50 days. Take a random sample is of 50 days taken. Time is noted. Given tra train is arriving, how long it is taking. So the result is summarized here. So this is the result of 50 days. So your N is 50 and sigma T is 92.5. So all the R's are added of 50 days and sigma T square is this. Now you have to calculate unbiased estimate of the population mean and variance. Now you need to understand what is unbiased estimate of population mean and variance. Whenever the population mean and variance is not given to you, and you find it out or estimate it with the help of sample, then it is called unbiased estimate of the population mean and variance. So the formula for the unbiased estimate of the population mean is same. So population mean and um, the one you calculate with the help of uh, sample, the formula is sigma t over n, right? Sorry, I have written here x, it should be here because I'm talking about this variable which is used here. So mu sometimes it is mentioned as mu dash in the book because when it is simple mu it is about the population right. So these are little simple uh, differences which tell you how did you calculate mean. So mean a uh, little hat on top of it or bar is representing of the estimated um, unbiased estimation mean of the population. So it is equals to 1.85. You are simply substituting this value in the formula and getting it, right? So we have calculated unbiased estimate uh, of the population mean. Now for the variance, the formula is this. Now for the simple variance of the population, we use sigma square, right? So again, with, there is a small hat, it is telling you that it is the unbiased estimation of this, uh, of the population mean, it is unbiased. And this S square is representing variance of the sample. So formula is N over N minus one multiplied by S square. And you all know the formula for the standard deviation, which is what, sorry, variance. Sigma t square over n minus mean square. This is actually your mean, which you have just calculated in part one. So in this formula, you will plug in the values. N is 50 and minus one is 49. This was given in the question. This we have just calculated. So you are finding unbiased estimation of the population variance. Now the next part is about testing the claim. Now there are different types of questions. So this is one of them. So whenever the sample data is given to you, right? And question is saying, find the test, the claim which was made, right? So what you will do, you will compare the Z value basically, right? The students are usually confused in my experience, okay, what to do in what case. So in this case, if you see, the question is saying 5% significance level and it is about mean. So my null hypothesis is that it is equals to 1.9. This is the number of hours the train is arriving and this was saying, you know, it was taking less than 1.9 hours. This was the uh, thing we have to test, alternative hypothesis. Is it taking less than 1.9 hours? Now, 
because this is about uh, sample mean, so that's why we represent it by x bar. So the test statistics is this. You need to understand what are these. I have written here a few things, which is a little extra, but just to explain it to you. When you are actually solving question, you just need to mention this formula there with the values. I'll show you in a while. So otherwise, the parameters are mu and variance. When it is of sample mean, because sampling distribution of mean, it is mu, which is mean, and your variance is sigma square over m. In this case, my sigma square, my variance is unbiased estimation of population variance, which I have just calculated in part one, right? So you have to mention this at this time because we are doing this test on sample mean. So we need to consider sample distribution. In this distribution, in case if you don't remember, in, no, in otherwise, the distribution of normal is what? Mu and variance. But here we will use the distribution of the sample because we are testing it on sample. So the sample size is 50. And by this central limit theorem, you know why? Because in the question, it was not mentioned that it is a normal distribution. So when question is not mentioned, at times a question um, asked you as a part, okay, is it necessary to apply central limit theorem? Or why are you applying central limit theorem? So, because central limit theorem allows us to apply normal formula here, the condition of the normal distribution, right? So, because the sample size is large, so that's why we can say it is approximately normal. And this is because of the central limit theorem. That's why we can make this a statement because sample size is large. Then by the central limit theorem, it is approximately normal, okay? So your central distribution of mean is approximately normal. So this is what we have gotten here and we have to make a test on 5%. So whenever we are making a test, so what do we do? So we are considering that if H0 is true, then mu is 1.5. And basically we are checking our mu. Okay, is it less than or it is equals to? So in your um, sampling distribution, of x you are plugging in the values because this you will use then as a mu and as a variance. So I have plugged in the value. This I calculated in part one. So now you do explain in the question that is it a lower tail test, upper tail test because it was less than 1.9. So it is lower tail test and one tail test at the 5% significance. This italic things I have just written for you to understand that it is lower tail because test is about claiming less than. If it was about more than, then it will be upper tail test. So this is how you find it out. Now from this Z table, we know that 5% lower tail test is minus 1.645. 1.645. What I mean by this, if I make it here, and this is my 5%, right? I will have here minus C. And they will always read bigger value. Sorry, positive value because the table which is given to A level students in the exam has only positive Z value. So we use symmetrical concept here, right? So if this is 5%, the symmetry of this will be 5% here. And this whole will be 95%. So to calculate this Z value, you will check against 0 0.95 and you will get your Z value. So it is minus 1.645. When you will read from the table, it will give you plus. But because your actual Z is on this side, minus Z. So that's why you will write minus 1.645. And now the values which are given to you in the question here, you will plug in in this formula and you will calculate your Z. If the Z of this is less than this, it means you are here because all the values on this side are less than minus 1.645. So this value is basically minus 1.645. So when you will calculate your values, if Z value will be less than this, it means it is here and you are in the critical region, then you will reject null hypothesis. Otherwise you will not. So let's see. 
So now we are substituting the values in the formula. Right here I have substituted. And I got minus 1.218. So if this is minus one, sorry, let me change the color so that it has become a little prominent. So if this is my minus 1.645, what do you think this value, where it will be? It will be here or here? Of course, it will be somewhere here, right? Because minus 1.218 is greater than this. It means you are not in the critical region. So you will make a statement here. Okay, since minus 1.210 is greater than this, hence it is not in the critical region, and therefore there is no evidence that mean time is less than this, because you have to make a statement around less than 1.9 hours. So you are saying it is not less than 1.9 hours. I hope you understood the question. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have learned something, press like and subscribe button and uh, share it with your friends. Take care. Allah Hafiz.